Hey guys, Chip here. So let's go through this new KidOps 2 interface. Talk a little bit about some of the things that may have changed since you last saw it. First off, we'll talk about the insert mode. And a lot of this is actually the same. We still have our KPAX lists up here. This button right here refreshes the list at any time. So if you're adding files or deleting files, sometimes you may want to refresh the list. The thumbnails for each KPAX now are displayed just as they were before. And just as before, when you select an object and you choose a thumbnail and you add the insert to the object, you will see that it works. X delete removes that insert. You also have the ability to set the large, medium, and small and adjust the size of whatever you want for those. Maybe say small is 25, medium is 50, and large is 100. Whatever you do, it'll save the preferences when you save it. And also, as you insert, let's go to the large, for instance, we'll insert this object and as we drag it around, if I scroll the mouse wheel, it'll scroll from large, medium to small. So I can use that as well. Hit the escape key to get out. Auto scale is nice, especially if you're using an object that you know is going to be a particular scale like this person. I'm going to basically turn off auto scale. And now when I add a person to this scene, you'll see that he comes in at the exact right size. This is a two meter high cube so you get an idea of what that is sometimes i just go over here and right click and just say delete hierarchy and another way of getting rid of inserts so we now have a way to directly add materials to a scene let's take a look at that we have this add material button i'll go in and i'll look for my k-pack this is from the definitely ev material system k-pack so i'll look and grab some metals I'll click on the thumbnail and I'll choose something like steel and I'll click the add material button and now I've got a steel distress material. And I can just keep on doing this gold shiny add material. Now we have shiny gold. So that's much more convenient than the previous way of applying materials. And back to the dapple mode, of course we have these other features like remove kit out props. Let's talk about that for just a second. So let's say I go in and I find an object like this bar stool here. I'm going to take this bar stool and I'm going to add it on top of this cube. And now that it's added on top, I want to go ahead and I'm going to choose a screw to put on top of here. Let's use a small. So I'll select this object and I'll add an insert and you see nothing happens actually. It only wants to insert it on the actual cube at the escape key. So sometimes I want to actually remove the kit ops prop of something. Now I can go ahead and install the insert directly on the bar stool. Scale that down and let's put it directly over one of the legs. Another feature that is available in smart mode, of course, is the ability to mirror. In regular mode, we don't have that, but in smart mode here, we have the ability to mirror. Now, notice that we don't have that right now, and that's because anytime you go from smart mode to regular mode, these objects are unlinked from the target object. So what you have to do is select the object, go into smart mode, and then click on this little eyedropper and drop it on the target. But now we have the ability to mirror this in the X, and in the Y direction. So that works well. So remember that if you go into regular mode, unlinks those. So when I come back into smart mode, I don't have the ability to turn that off if I want to. I just come back here, click on here, and I can turn these two off like so. There's also the ability to center it, your insert, um, whatever direction you're looking to center it on. In the case of something like a cube where you're gonna insert it on the side, like this, and you want to center it, your first one will center it in one direction. You click the second one, it centers it in the wrong direction, but you just go over here and you click Z axis and that'll get you fixed. So that's how that works. And the align commands kind of work pretty much the same way. You can hit align and then hit the Z axis. The apply and delete buttons will be deprecated because the apply button is pretty much the same thing as remove kit ops props and delete is the same thing as going up here and hitting X delete. So very similar. We also have the ability to auto select the insert. And the reason for this is in complex inserts, you've got multiple objects in there. If you look at this particular screw, we've got a, we got the hole and we have the screw in there. And so we want to be able to select them and just move them around 
as we wish. But sometimes we may want to change the actual material of the inside part or move it. And what we can do is turn auto select off. And then we just select the part that we want and we can move that where we want. And then we can turn auto select back on. And now we can continue to move and scale and deal with the object as we would normally. The buttons down here, this basically takes you to the online documentation and this takes you to the KitOp store if you want to look for more KPAX. So a good idea on setting up your objects is when you start with a cube or whatever object you have, always put a weighted normal at the very end and then under preferences, go all the way down, check this and make sure you check the sort weighted normal and that'll always put it at the bottom. And then when you start to add inserts, and that way, when you start to add inserts, you're going to be sure you're going to end up with some proper geometry and it'll render correctly. And then a lot of times what I'll do at the very end is I'll add a modifier, like a bevel modifier, stick it before the weighted normal and change it to something like 0 0.001 and uh, make sure to turn off clamp override. And as you zoom in, you'll start to see that you can show it there. Maybe it's 0 0.002, whatever, whatever's going to work. But it'll give you a little bit of a highlight, it'll catch a little highlight for you. So there's going to come a time when you're going to want to convert your object into a mesh. So let's take a look at this. If I tab into this, you'll see it's still just a cube. So how do I convert it? Well, there's a bunch of different ways. One is you can go over the add modifiers and you can just one at a time top down, just hit this apply button. You can also go over object and say, apply visual geometry to mesh. And then you'll clean up all these. But KitOps has its own way of doing it. And that's this convert to mesh. I find that it works just perfectly. And that does create my mesh. And if I look at it, let's turn off the inserts and look at it in the wireframe mode and you'll see that it works just fine. Now, one of the key things here is I always like to work in regular mode, not smart mode when I do this. Just makes things a little simpler. So let's talk about a couple shortcuts. One thing to know is anytime you place an insert on an object, scroll down to the small and let's say I place this insert right here. Now, if I wanna add another insert, I can come over here and I can grab another one and just add that insert again and what it'll do since it can't add it to this insert like we talked about before it's going to add it to the target object of that insert so we just drag and drop and that's a real easy way that simplifies your ability to continue to add inserts another pretty cool trick is let's go back to our bolt with a hole i'm going to go ahead and create this at maybe 10 and then i'm going to add that insert to this object and when I do that, I'm going to hold the shift key down. And as I hold the shift key down, I can continue to place this wherever I want, anywhere on this object. So you can see how cool that can be. Those are just a couple of the tricks that might be helpful to you. By the way, you notice that I did change this 25. Anytime you select an insert, you can also adjust the size using these buttons as well. Let's talk about a few more things you can do in smart mode. We'll start off in regular mode and I'm going to go to small, select this, add this insert, and we'll stick him right here. And now in regular mode, I can say shift D X and I can move them around. Shift D X, move them around, right? And I can undo, undo. I can also do shift D X and then shift R for replicate. So that works fine. But what happens if I have a cutter also involved? So let's add that insert, put him here. So he's got a hole in there. We can see it a little better here. And if I say shift D X and move, you'll notice the cutter is not applied. And that's because we're in regular mode. So we'll need to be in smart mode for that to work. So I'll click over to smart mode. And once in smart mode, I'm gonna to need to make sure that this is linked to the box like that. And then I will say shift D X and you'll see that shift R, it works fine. So that's something to keep in mind is if you're trying to duplicate inserts and they have cutters, you want to be in smart mode. Once you're done, of course, you can get out of smart mode and everything will be fine. So what's the difference between the free version and the pro version? 
Well, with regard to what you've just seen, and that is creating objects in the insert mode, everything that has to do with smart mode is part of pro. And of course, everything in regular mode is available in free and pro. So if you're trying to decide which version to use, hopefully that will be your guide. And that's the basic interface for building objects using KitOps, KPAX, and inserts.